Hello. Hello. Today's date is? December 30th. One day away from the end of the year. Uh-oh. So it's going to be 2025? No, 2020. It feels like 2025. To me. It feels five years in the future. Of course it does. Of course it does. And, um... <coughs> who's president five years in the future? Well, hopefully we won't have one. We'll have King Jesus. Oh, no, here in the United States. Well, in the United States, we won't, won't be here anymore. Why not? Because we have King Jesus. Well, don't we have a thousand <laughs> years of uh, millennial stuff and all that stuff? Come on. Come on. What are we talking about today? Today, we're going to talk about our words. Our, our words. Words. Our words. Words we speak. This is... Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's been coming to our attention lately, has it not? It has. We speak God's word, which is truth, which is life, because anything other than that is of the devil. The devil, and it speaks death. Death. Yeah, it's been coming to our attention lately with a lot of people we're talking to, and they keep saying the same thing. And Well, you know, I should know. clarify, because sometimes we can say, well, you know what, I'm going to Walmart. That does. That's a neutral no. statement, yeah. but, you know... Um, when we talk uh, condemnation to ourselves, mm-hmm. that's not of God. No. Because if you're in Christ, then there is no condemnation. And I just want to correct you. Oftentimes, if you say something like, I'm going to Walmart, you are going to death. If you're going to Walmart, you shouldn't be going to Walmart. That's death. Well, if I don't go to Walmart, you won't eat. I know. Because <laughs> we, we don't have regular. we only got one other grocery store. Smice. Smiths. Yeah. We can't go there because it's six miles away. It's just too far. <laughs> uh, no, in all, in all honesty here, yeah, your words. It's like James. You know how they talk? James talks about the tongue, blah, 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 blah. Yes. And we've heard that lesson over and over again. That must be another translation. It, I it is. It's, <laughs> it's, it's Brother Kapow translation. You just go blah, blah, blah. And you just like get to the end and then you go, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand what he's trying to say. But you always talk about the tongue and the tongue, you know, blah, 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 blah. Mm. This is different than the tongue. This is the the mouth in conjunction with the heart, but it's a spiritual principle where it's the opposite of taking in the mouth and going into the gut, but from the heart or the belly coming out of the mouth. Okay. Defilement. So it's still words like James talks about. It's yes. still speech, but... But there's another spiritual principle behind it. And I think that's what we're going to get to as soon as I can get to it. Right? Right. So let's do it. Whatever. Uh, Spiritual surgery. We're going to entitle this spiritual surgery because that's what it requires in the heart condition. Spiritual surgery. Okay. So oftentimes we, we take in poison. From a serpent's bite. Now, we shouldn't, right? I mean, we should. And when we say poison, we're talking about a lie. A lie. Yes, it's a poison. It's a demonic lie, a demonic poison. Now, we shouldn't because in Mark 16, it says not only would we cast out devils if we're believers, but that we would, if we drank anything deadly, any kind of poison, anything sorcery, it shouldn't hurt us. But sometimes, just sometimes, in certain conditions in life, these things get through, mm-hmm. you know, because whatever reason. You've given it ground. You've given it ground, you know, your walk or, you know, whatever happens. So it shouldn't, but sometimes it does. It depends on how big the bite is, how much poison you have, how much surgery has to be done. And there are stories of a people that have believed a lie. Now, John Osteen, Joel's father, mm-hmm. tells a story about his sister. Right. And he hadn't seen his sister in years, mm-hmm. years. They were good Baptists. And John, he got filled with the Holy Ghost. Yep. Amen. So he became crazy for Jesus. Amen. That's wonderful. Yeah. He became crazy for Jesus, but what it did is it kind of separated 
him from the rest of the Baptist family. And his sister was a real good Baptist Sunday school teacher, just a good lady. And he hadn't seen her in years. And the story goes that uh, he got word. Well, he was driving. He was driving with his mother-in-law, with uh, Dodie and uh, his uh, daughter, I believe. Mm. And Dodie was. Uh, That's his wife, Dodie. Dodie was going to have, um, was pregnant. Mm-hmm. And the spirit of the Lord um, said something about his sister, Mary, that he needed to go and deliver her. Yeah. And yeah. he says, Lord, well, I'll go there as soon as Dodie gives birth to the child. And I think it was like the next day or something. Yes. And then he was on his way. He called his mother and his mother said his sister was very, very sick. Um, and he didn't know any of this, but apparently she was, um, she was in a convalescent um, because of her, her mind. And uh, the doctors had given hope on her. So she was now at home and she had like 24 hour care. You know, she was just totally. Um, uh, barely unrecognizable. Just yeah. Uh, living in a room all dark, all blackened out, laid up in a bed, um, just all screwed tormented up. Just tormented. Just... Yeah, just tormented. And what John didn't know is that she had been tormented by demons. Right. She had actually seen and felt demons in her room, mm-hmm. things like that. So she was just kind of, almost like an insane asylum. Yeah, and all because she believed a lie. Yeah. So he, he went there with another pastor and to see her and he couldn't, he didn't recognize her as his sister. Mm-mm. He couldn't believe it. And, um, he found out that she had been seeing demons, uh, in the room and stuff like that. And what, what it was is she had believed the lie from the devil that said, uh, how did it go? Basically that God wanted her that way. Yeah. That this, that this, whatever vexation that she had was, from the Lord. Yeah. And uh, so she kept it. Yeah. This, it was God's will that she, she'd be this way. And when he found that out, he corrected her. He rebuked that demon. Well, the thing is, he when he went there, he said the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Yeah. And it said, don't tell me that God put this on my sister. Mm-hmm. And he said it so loud that the spirit of God actually spoke to his sister's soul, her spirit. And she heard it and said, I don't believe this is from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And at that time he started praying in tongues and he cast that sucker out of her and she was completely healed. Yeah. And at that moment she had quit believing that lie Mm -hmm. and she got completely ill. Amen. So it was like, it was a very dramatic story about how, uh, this one lie incapacitated her. Yeah, and we could believe it. Now, years ago, when I was at Calvary Chapel in Nuevo, California, and uh, we'd run around before service praying for people and stuff, and there was a deaf man on the front row, and um, I think he had the deaf ministry, you know, and he would mm-hmm. do the sign language and stuff. And I was talking to him, and I had asked him if he wanted me to pray for him over his, his deafness, you know, um, knowing full well that it could be a demonic you know, attachment, but he had told me that he, he believed that his deafness was from God yep. because it opened up doors to him to ministry that he could never, uh, have before. Right. He minister to the deaf. Yeah. And so he, he, and he told me straight out, he goes, I don't want people praying for me. I don't let people pray for me. This is from God and blah, blah, blah. So mm-hmm. to each their own. Yeah. Um, but see, but that's not what the Bible teaches because The work on the cross that Jesus did was to defeat the work of the enemy, which is all those, all diseases, death, sin, everything that, um, that is not of God Mm -mm. is what the Lord, um, you know, um, the death of the Lord conquered. Yeah. It conquered all of that. So the, you know, when people say, um, this, you know, the sickness must you know, it's probably God's will. It's not God's will. No. And it's a lot of it is, uh, they don't either know, understand, or believe the words of God because it's not biblical, Mm-mm. but they will latch on to a lie, even though the truth is right in front of them in, in the word of God, but they'll latch onto this lie because their case is different or special or whatever reason. Mm-hmm. We knew another gal at another Calvary chapel 
San Jacinto, California. And she had apparently a real beautiful voice. Yeah, she at did. One she, time. And she loved to sing. She loved to sing praises to the Lord. I mean, she was really into it. Mm -hmm. And she believed, and she stopped singing. And when we asked her about it, she said that she believed that God told her not to sing anymore. And she, and she, at that time, she said um, that she was waiting for him to release her so that she can sing again. And at that time, it had been 10 years. Yeah. And she was waiting for God to give her uh, his, his next plan, his next mm -hmm. direction. And it was like 10 years? You've been waiting for 10 years? Yeah, 10 years. I used to, she, in fact, she was one of the Maranatha singers and everything on all these albums. Oh, dear God. And um, yeah, she quit singing and she thought that was of the Lord. That's what the Lord wanted her to do. And he was going to put her in another direction, but it had been 10 years. So a lie. One lie, a Christian, you're a good Christian and you're tooling around, um, you know, life, uh, serving the God, walking in the spirit and everything. And it just takes one lie of the enemy can totally derail a Christian, could totally derail your... Now, I'm not. we're not talking about you're going to die and go to hell. We're talking about it derails your, your, your effective witness, mm -hmm. your work, your walk, and of course... If you're like her or the deaf guy or something, um, you got all kinds of other uh, other issues too. But it's um, it's a lie of Satan, and so it's it, Satan is so subtle, and he's been doing this since we were created by God. That's how long he's been doing, it. and he's actually the progenitor of a lie. He mm -hmm. actually created the lie. Uh, this what, what you're up against is not just. Oh, the old devil or a little demon. I mean, you're, these these entities, that's all they do is lie and deceive. And that's the only way they're able to get to us is through deception, through between the ears, the temples, the head. But they're very good. And to think otherwise is uh, you're, you're, you're leaving yourself unguarded mm -hmm. to think otherwise. You really have to guard your heart and you have to guard your mind incredibly so because it's just... Um, the subtlety out there is incredible. So let's look at some of this. So we talk about spiritual surgery here. When a poison or a lie, uh, I call it from a serpent's bite. You know, it's a serpent bites and it enters into a person when they believe the lie. It could be any lie. In your case, you're listening to us and take a moment and reflect uh, if, if you have not believed some kind of lie in your life that wasn't of God. Or was it a biblical, you know, some, some kind of thing that jumped in your head and it may or may not have, have taken hold or it may have, you might be in bondage right now. Um, I tell the story that one time, once again, in the Calvary where I was walking by the pastor, remember oh, when yeah, I, was, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was taking my drums down and he said something about, oh, that drummer. And he was talking to the other, the, the worship team leader and a couple other musicians and and what went through my head is that he had just got back from a conference, talked to some other guys about drums and 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 I played too loud and, and this whole fantasy thing came into my head mm -hmm. that he wasn't happy with with your performance. My yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it really bothered me. And then and I asked one of the guys that was with him and you know, subtly I go, What are you guys talking about? You know, what are you guys talking about? He goes, No, we was just you know See, but then at that time too, because of your past history oh yeah you you had a uh, lack of confidence yeah th that was a chink in my armor because mm -hmm. you know today you go to these big churches and they got drums and, and, and yeah, now you can play and you can dress the, the way you want yeah you can dress the way you want and you can play loud and they got them in a plexiglass cage and all might but when i went when i was growing up playing in churches drums were anathema that was a, that was an instrument of the devil literally i literally um wasn't allowed to play when I was with uh, Reflections when I was just a kid at age 15 I literally was not allowed to play in a Baptist church mm -hmm. also when I played with Charles and Francis Hunter one time the pastor didn't want drums to play and they they allowed they said that was okay and I didn't play that night just the amigos sang and I didn't play drums this was back in the uh, 80s and yeah and, and you were a young man very yeah. impressionable so you know that that's painful yeah. so and then if you had long hair or you dressed a little Lucy Goosey. It wasn't like it was today. Hillsong changed everything. 
but it wasn't like that in my day. So there was a lot of prejudice against uh, drummers or uh, Mexicans or long hair. There really was. Mm -hmm. So it's a poison. It's a serpent bite. It, it enters you. And if you believe the lie, the lie, and here's, and here's the thing. The lie always condemns you. Always. It's always condemning. Uh, like in the case of the gal we were talking about who lost her voice, it was always a condemnation. Mm -hmm. Whatever she did, um, the guy with the, the lost his hearing, it was it was always condemning. Uh, you did something. Uh, now, what was her condemnation? I don't remember. I forgot. I forgot. I mean, she was into. I forgot. To tell you the truth. Um, but the Holy Spirit does not condemn you. The Holy Spirit convicts. We we. We've there's, got, there's a lot of teaching on this. We've taught on this about how the Holy Spirit prods you in the conviction, but doesn't condemn you. So here's a serpent bite and it's condemning. And then the poison or the condemnation, the light spreads into a person's heart, which is their mind and their innermost parts, right? So it enters in, you know, either through thinking or through hearing or something. It enters the most inner parts. And then what happens, it starts to manifest itself with the mouth. Mm -hmm. in self-condemnation you'll hear the speech change you know you'll hear um you know I, i've accepted this or uh, i deserve this or i shouldn't have out of the heart the mouth speaks is what the word of god says yeah and so what happens is the the serpent the poison comes in and if it's able to roost if it was a, if it's able to get in there and do a root then the mouth is the fruit Right, it's the fruit of the root, and then it it speaks in self condemnation. Now, once it gets to a point like this, and like we're talking about John Olstein's sister, I mean, you're talking a very dramatic, woo, you know, high end um, takeover on a lie. I mean, major. Once it gets to a point like that, and you think, well, that's from God, or I deserve that or well it's bondage it's yeah it, it 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 takes hold of you the problem with the subtlety is is that you're still a Christian and you're still walking uh, in the spirit you're still serving Christ you just happen to believe a lie that's based on your Christianity so it's not like it's a big thing. Oh, I got to quit drinking. Oh, I got to quit gambling. It's not like that. It's more of a subtle thing on condemnation. You know, I'm no good for this or I did this. Does that make sense? No, I'm not making sense. I can't find examples to make, make sense. Mm. Um, so, well, hopefully if you're listening, it makes sense to you. <laughs> there, the poison has to be spiritually removed by the knife of God. It's cutting to the bone and cutting the cancer out. The word is that truth that has to be spread in the heart in order to cut out the poison. See, the mouth will begin to speak more and more truth. As, the, as more and more truth gets in you. Yes. As you're being healed from this you'll be you'll speak more and more truth because the truth is the evidence that this poison is being lifted yes and if there's too much poison you will hear the truth not being spoken you'll only hear the poison being spoken so it's in the language it's in the mouth you can tell the person vexed may not be able to tell but anybody else around them that's trying to help them out will be able to hear it in the words right Mm -hmm. um, you should be able to tell if you're vexed too. If you're if you're sensitive to this kind of thing, you should go. Why am I saying this kind of stuff? Yeah, you should. You know, because it doesn't feel good. It's not something that makes you feel good. It, you, it it always condemns and makes you feel bad. So why am I why am I talking negative? Mm -hmm. Why am I talking? And I'm not just talking. You know, negative. It's it's writing somebody negative, um, emailing or texting or anything that you're glorifying outflow. Yeah, it's the outflow of the poison. And so you're glorifying the poison, the serpent, the demonic lie instead of the truth. Okay, so it's not positive thinking. It's not, well, I'm just going to go ahead and confess it differently 
and just hope for the best. There really is a spiritual principle behind all this. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll get to that. There's a real spiritual principle why the mouth has to be controlled and speaking the poison. Mm -hmm. So the mouth will begin to speak more and more truth as evidence of the healing. In other words, as the truth fills the heart, the mouth speaks less poison and more truth. And like you said, Ms. Kapow, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. The mouth speaks. So let's go to Psalms 19, 14. And it says, let the words of my mouth. You notice what comes first? Mouth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Hallelujah. Now notice that the mouth comes before the heart in this verse. Mm -hmm. There's a principle here. There's a, there's a spiritual principle we're going to get to. If I were to, if I were the psalmist uh, today here in Mesquite, Nevada, I would have wrote, let the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, Lord. Because to me, it's what's inside. Your belief system. Yes. And so, what you believe gets gets come out. Exactly. So if my belief system's messed up and inside I'm not right, that's not going to be acceptable to the Lord. And so when I speak these negative things, it's not acceptable. So I would have I would have wrote it, let the meditation of my heart and the words that come out of my mouth be acceptable because the words to me in a modern day person in 2020 <laughs> would would think that the words are just simply the outflow of your heart mm -hmm. and they are mm -hmm. but back here the psalmist being under the influence of the holy ghost and being inspired by god himself and writing the words of god doesn't write like i would have he writes let the words of my mouth he puts it first confession yeah, and then he says the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. It's interesting, right? So it's just like Romans 8.10. The confession or mouth comes before belief in the heart, right? Mm -hmm. Is that correct, Romans 8.10? Mm -hmm. Confess, uh, I, I don't have it written down, but isn't it if you confess with your mouth, I'm, I'm spitballing here why, when Miss Kapow finds it. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. Yes, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, what's interesting is Romans 8, 10, the mouth, Paul writes the same way under the influence of the Holy Ghost. He writes the same thing. The mouth comes first before the heart. Now, isn't that interesting? Once again, I, if, I, if I was the Apostle Paul here in Nevada, I would have wrote, hey, someone says, how do you come to Christ? I would have said, well, you got to believe in your heart, right? You got you to believe inside that. That God rose, raised him from the dead, and then and then you have to confess it, you have to you have to proclaim it, you have to declare it to yourself and to others. Then you'll be saved. It makes all the sense in the world, right? First, you got to believe, and then you speak what you believe. Correct? Mm -hmm. But nay, nay. Both the psalmist and Paul put the mouth first. If you'll confess, if you'll profess, if you declare. The Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that he raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. Interesting. And I think I screwed up. I said Romans 8, 10, and it's Romans Yeah, that's why 10, I was but it's 10. It's 10, 9. So, Brother Kapow, once again, not speaking under the <laughs> influence of the Holy Ghost, but speaking under the influence of stupidity, screwed it up. So, don't listen to me. Just listen to the content. All right? Yeah, so, so it is Romans 10, 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. So you're speaking about the Lord Jesus. Yeah. His his work and who he is and what he's done, the truth of Jesus. 
So you're speaking the Lord Jesus and then, and shall believe. So it's, it's kind of, you're working together. You're confessing with your mouth and you're believing in thy heart that God raised him from the dead. With those, that combination, you shall be saved. Yeah. And it's just interesting that the mouth, there's a spiritual principle here. Let's see, Psalms 51.10 doesn't talk about the mouth. There's, oh, and obviously, if you do a, a search in the King James, I don't know about other translations, but in the King James, if you search mouth, you will find all kinds of connection with the mouth-heart, mouth-heart connection. I mean, a lot of it. It's it's everywhere in the Word. So this is just a few things with the with the heart. There's no mouth in Psalm 51.10, but... The psalmist says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. What's interesting about this is as he's writing this, you can picture him speaking it. Mm -hmm. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. He's not just thinking it. He's writing it or declaring it out. Right. Proverbs 4, 2 says, keep thy heart. With all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. This is interesting because this goes right with Jesus is saying mm-hmm. that it's out of the heart, the innermost man that defiles a person. Mm-hmm. Okay? That's why it's important to guard it. That's what the word uh, keep means, that you keep, you guard it, you protect it. With all diligence, it's like guard, guard, double guard, really, really guard. Because why do you have to guard it? Now, here's what's interesting if you look at this, Proverbs 4, 2. It doesn't say that you guard it to keep stuff out of it. You get this? It doesn't say guard it with all diligence so that bad things don't enter your heart. It says guard it because out of it comes all the issues. Comes of issues of life. So your heart itself is already defiled and sensual and earthy and soulish, and it's part of a fallen nature. Mm-hmm. Kind of what Jeremiah was saying, that out of the heart, you know, it's evil, deceitful yeah. above all things. Yes, your, your heart is deceitful above all things. And so when he says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it is issues of mouth, to me, it's like, don't let those issues out. Don't confess the soulish nature. Well, maybe that's what it means too, you know, with the heart, because it's deceitful and evil. You can't depend on what's your heart Mm-mm. just by what, but what you're saying, you're speaking truth and the word you're of God. You're declaring the spiritual principle is a debar. Like God does. God like declares, God does. God speaks his Rima, yeah. his logos. Yeah. And that's the spiritual, um, you're, you're, you're getting ahead of the lesson plan, Mr. Oh, Brown. Oh, sorry. Got excited. I know you got excited. Dude, because that's like the punchline. This is the thing where you go, wait for it, wait for it. Oh. And then you lay it on the people. But now you've already given them a clue. And now they're spinning around going, what is it? What is it? What is this great spiritual truth? And next week, we'll be back for part two. <laughs> if you just donate $200 to our ministry, we'll give you the secrets. Just kidding. Um, so we we talked about Romans 10, 9 already. Mm-hmm. But Proverbs 4, 2, I think this is interesting. And I'm just, I don't know about you, but I'm just seeing this now. The issue of, would you guard the heart? You're not keeping things from coming into it. You're keeping the stuff from coming out. I just saw that. I think that's interesting. If you, why is it like that, right? Mm-hmm. So here, here's this, you know, we're going to get to a spiritual principle. But for right now, the so the exercise the way the way you're going to reverse the poison, the lie that came into you, right? And this the lie can be anything that's it's always condemnation. I mean, the lie may just be, um, you know, you're you're too whatever to do what God has you to do. You're too, or maybe a prideful thing that you're the the only one that can really do it well. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, but th- because they won't let me preach, uh, and I'm the only one that can really preach in this church, you know, I, I don't know. But it's a lie. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be anything. So, in, you know, as, as you're listening to this, you're going to have to really kind of search out and think, have I been lied to? Have I bought into something? Um, I think a common lie would be 
that you just, you can't really walk the walk. You're just not spiritual you're not enough. enough. You're not good enough. You're not a good Christian like your mm-hmm. cousin. Because you're comparing yourself to somebody else. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. your Aunt Martha or something. Oh, and I love to do that. I love to watch some of these really, really good Bible teachers. I mean, mm-hmm. that that are really gifted. Right. I mean, you you look at these men and go, wow, there's no doubt about How it. How did that, he catch that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they, they have a gift. And I'll, I'll watch them and listen to them and go, what am I doing with my little podcast? Why don't I just shut it down and let the and let the real experts take it? Yeah. You know, that's how I feel because like I, I don't have nothing to say yeah. after listening to those guys. I mean, those those guys are heavy, man. I'm yeah. an idiot. No, you're not. You're you're that's a gift- condemnation. But no, you're a gifted teacher. You are a gifted oh, I teacher. Will. I think. Make her Mr. Powell out of her heart. She lies to me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, you know, I, I think we all kind of have our little place or something, but uh, and maybe the people that I listen to, the listeners that listen to me wouldn't necessarily find them interesting. I don't know. You know, so it all kind of just depends on they what had to listen to somebody. They had to learn from professors. They had a, you know, they might think Professor So-and-so was the greatest thing in their life. And if I listen to Professor So-and-so, I think, well, I don't get anything from them. You know, right. mm-hmm. you I do, but not them. Because it's at that room. moment, the word that you need to hear. Yeah. So the exercise that we have to do as, as Christians, we all have to do this. We have to reverse the lie of condemnation with the what? With the truth of no condemnation, which is in Romans 8, 1, that says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Flesh is unsaved and the spirit is saved. And I want, that's why I want to clarify, because a lot of times you'll read this passage in this passage, Romans 8, 1, comes after chapter 7. In all the chapters before it, where Paul is laying down this huge foundation of Jesus Christ and what God did through Jesus Christ for our salvation. So when he gets to verse 1, here's this, 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 huge, this huge transitory word that says, therefore... In other words, because I just laid down everything I just said, therefore, now there's no condemnation. So in order to really get Romans 8, when you need to read seven. what's before it. Yeah. yeah. And really Actually, get six it. and seven, because six and seven go together. And then the crescendo or the is, is Romans 8. Eight. It's like, ta-da. And that's why he says, therefore, everything I just got done saying, therefore, now, because I just laid all this foundation, there's no condemnation. So to them who are in Christ Jesus, if you're saved, if you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, right? You've confessed with your mouth. Mm-hmm. You believed in your heart. You're saved. There's a re- The Holy Spirit enters you and starts to regenerate you. Yes. And, he, and, and <laughs> excuse me. And as the Holy Spirit begins to regenerate, then it's convicted of the sins and you begin to change and begin mm-hmm. to walk in the Spirit. And that sanctification process begins. starts. Yes. And you start being sanctified. Okay. But as soon as you receive Christ as your Savior, Ms. Kapow, you're justified. You're justified. It's a legal justification. In heaven, in the court of God, he goes, boom, and he hits his gavel and he says, You've been acquitted. Of all your sin. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, the death of my son, and he was risen. Yes. And so you are acquitted from all your sin, your past sin, your present sin, and and your your future future sin. sin. When you go, where is my sin? And you look and says, Christ Jesus paid that penalty. The wages of sin is death. And Christ, our Messiah, paid that for free. On your behalf. And not only that, here's the good news. His righteousness before God is now imputed on you. That's right. The ex That's the breastplate of righteousness that we wear. Yep. So when God sees you, he sees Christ's righteousness now, and he sees no sin on you. Amen. That is a legal declaration in the court of God at the moment of your salvation. And you can't undo that. You can't go up there and unring that bell change it. That has nothing to do with you. That has everything to do with God. That's right. Now, once that happens, the Holy Spirit enters in you 
and he begins. That's a regeneration process at, you know, like the same time it's all going on. Then you begin to be sanctified and walk in the spirit. Amen. And you're like convicted of sin. Like, I don't want to do that no more. And all of a sudden I change. I don't know. I don't want to think that no more. I want to do this. And all of a sudden I'm interested in the word. And you begin to get um, in the image of Christ. Of Christ. This is where you become conformed yeah. into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's what you're doing because you're doing the work down here. You're the representative of God down here on earth. Because you are made in the image of God. That's right. So at the end of the day, when, when Christ comes back and redeems you, because he's already paid the price, then he takes and redeems you. And now you will be with him forever in eternity mm. and get a glorified body. Anyway, that's why it's good news. It's, it's absolutely fantastic news. And you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Until the day of redemption. Yes. The Holy Spirit don't leave you. Your, your court case that says you're acquitted don't leave you. What Christ did on the cross don't leave you. All sins, everything stops at the cross. There's nothing you can do to get past that cross. You can't. That's why it's a stumbling block. You can't get past it mm -mm. if you're a believer. So Satan hates that. So that's why he deceives in the condemnation area. If he can get somebody condemned or better yet, Here's what he does. He gets the person to condemn themselves by speaking condemnation language over themselves. Basically, they curse themselves, word curses. Okay? So here's the exercise for all of us, and for you listening, is you need to reverse the lie of condemnation with the truth of no condemnation. And you do this every time the lie comes to you, in whatever form it comes to you as thought in the head, a feeling, a tingling sensation, <laughs> however it comes to you, Romans 8, 1. Mm -hmm. You don't have to quote this thing verbatim. You don't have to go, just say, because I'm in Christ Jesus, I'm no longer condemned. Just say, yes. I have no condemnation because I'm in Christ Jesus. That's all you have to do. Because that's the truth. I, uh, there was a, a lady in our, one of our Bible studies, and um, she was saying that the enemy was giving her things, reminding her of things that she did, I mean, well in her early days. You know, and she, this lady's now in her 70s. And she just felt this condemnation. And it was like, that's of the devil. Mm -hmm. You know, that those are, those, that's the accuser. accuser. Mm -hmm. accusing you of things that have been washed in the blood of Jesus and it has no standing anymore. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. But that can really trip up a person. I get that now and then too, even though I lived a, a very perfect life. Uh, I'm, just, I'm being facetious. I didn't live a perfect life. I do get that now and then. Sometimes I just get this thought out of the blue and I'll remember something I did or something I said or the way I treated this person at work or I, I'll just remember something mm -hmm. and, I, and I'll think, oh my gosh, that was horrible. Mm -hmm. You know, I see it as very horrible. It's like, man, that was a horrible thing to do or a horrible thing to say. Or, and, um, and if I allowed myself to continue on that path, it would be very condemning. Right. You know, but at some point you got to go, wow. You know, if they were in front of me, I would ask them, would you forgive me for yeah. that, man? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, you know, I mean, these people you won't even see again. But would you forgive me for that? I was a different person then. Um, and then, you know, once I do that, then I go, well, God, God doesn't remember that either. No. And so there's no condemnation to that. But if you, if I were to hang on to that, it would lead me down a path of, of past condemnation. Mm -hmm. But in the court of God, I've been acquitted. Right. By, by taking the condemnation back is giving place to Satan. Mm -hmm. Then Satan could come into my mind and he could start playing all kinds of tricks with me and take dominion because I've opened the door by what? By not believing the word of God. The word of God says, all my sins were imputed on Christ. His righteousness was imputed on me. But if I don't believe that and I take that back, Satan's playground. Mm -hmm. I'm still saved. It doesn't change the fact 
that my sins were imputed on Christ or his righteousness imputed on me as far as God's legal, the legal standing in God's court. Mm -hmm. However, down here on earth, it affects my walk and my effectiveness and the way I see things and the way I walk in the spirit and the way I minister. It affects everything in my Christian walk. And now I walk with condemnation. And who knows where that leads to? Mm -hmm. Could lead to physical ailments, could lead to mental ailments. It could be like John Osteen's sister. Right. You know, it could be in a darkened room, you know, drooling on myself. You know, because it's torment. It's it's torment. Condem condemnation is torment. Um so that's what you have that's what you'd have to do. Anytime that kind of self-condemnation comes on you, you have to speak. And it's important that you speak that you, it's not, you just don't have it in your heart. Like, you know, you silently go, you speak it out. It's important that your mouth say it. Okay. You have to say this out loud through the mouth. Every time you feel an evil presence, either physical or emotional. And here's the deal by confessing the truth of no condemnation, which is God's truth. You build stronger what I call poison defeating white blood cells mm -hmm. in your heart and in your mind and in your belly. In other words, in your most inner being, you start reversing that poison. See, how do you deal with pollution? Ms. Kapow had a class in university on hazardous materials or something like that. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah. Did the online course on hazardous materials. And the only thing I remember from that course that you took was pollution. And it said, how do you deal with pollution was through dilution. Mm -hmm. You dilute it. So if, if you have poison or something that's polluting something, you have to dilute it right. with water. You have to dilute it to weaken the strength of the poison. Or if you're going to use a kitchen cleaner, right? Mm -hmm. Vinegar, you have to dilute it with water. That's or right. bleach, you need to dilute it with water. So it's the same thing. If you got poison in your spiritual man, you need to dilute it with truth. Right. Right. And the more truth you have, the more poison is pushed out and you get rid of the serpent bite mm -hmm. through the truth. Right. That's why the truth, Ms. Kapow, sets you free. Sets you free. The truth sets you free. What sets you free? The truth. The truth. The truth. Right. Not, not doing other exercises. Not watching this video or that video, the truth only the truth not uh, deliverance ministers not chasing um, different names of demons and all this stuff the truth is what sets you free it's only the truth that will set you free when you're bound like this um, so here here is now okay here's here's the bomb here's the spiritual principle here Are you guys ready here it is. I call this the medicine. When you're taking the truth in, it's the medicine. And it is taken in the opposite way of human wisdom. It's the opposite of how you would do it in the human realm. This is important to get. In other words, the medicine first enters into your belly or through your heart or through your innermost being through hearing or reading the truth, okay? And then it is ingested or activated or spoke into existence for the person by speaking it out through the mouth. Mm -hmm. In the Hebrew, it's called the bar, the word of the bar. It's where you get a prophetic word. They spoke the bar. It's a prophetic speaking. God speaks to bar and the prophets of God speak to bar. In Greek, in the New Testament, it's rima. The it's rima. the rima word. Okay. It's important. This ain't blab it and grab it or, you know, say it and claim it. This ain't that. This ain't positive thinking. This is a spiritual principle. It's This is how God created the word the world, this is how Jesus Christ, the word of God, the logos, the word spoke everything into existence. He didn't think it in existence 
or have it in his heart in existence. He didn't meditate it on existence. He spoke it into existence. Mm -hmm. We are created in his image. We speak things into existence. Our words matter. Yes. And I like what you said that the medicine enters first into your belly through the hearing or reading the truth. And that goes with uh, Romans 10, 17. So that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Bam. Bam. And then if you speak with your mouth and believe in your heart, then you're saved. It's just how the, the, how the poison entered in through hearing or through a thought or through a bite. The truth enters in the same way. It's a spiritual principle. So the truth of the word is activated or spoke into existence by the mouth. It's, it's your confession. Mm -hmm. This is huge to understand. This is huge to understand. Let me say it again. The truth of the word is activated. Okay. You can have the truth in you, but you have to activate it by speaking, speaking it. it. Yep. That's how it's ingested. You activate it. All right. Your confession. Now, remember, we are created in the image of God and we have the mind of Messiah who spoke the worlds into existence. He spoke them into existence. So the poison entered the same way. You might have believed a lie. And then you begin ingesting it with the mouth. Mm -hmm. It's like the example I said, sometimes I get a weird thought about, man, you did something to this person or you said something or man, wow. You know, sometimes I'll think like that, especially in my latter career, you know, in police work. I mean, to me, I was a real booger. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll think about that. It'll be con condemnation. Now, if I were to speak that all the time, then it would get inside of me. That's how I would activate that negativity and that self-condemnation by speaking it. So this is the spiritual concept. So to reverse it, you need to only take the medicine of truth, which is what? There's no condemnation because I'm in Christ Jesus. I'm acquitted. I'm justified. I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit. I'm being sanctified. I'm going to be glorified, period. It's the work of the cross. It's the gospel message inside of you, right? You need to take the medicine of truth into your heart, and then how do you activate it, Ms. Kapow? You ingest it. By speaking it. Speaking it forth. It's very simple. This isn't complicated stuff. It's very, very simple once you understand this spiritual principle. God's ways aren't complicated. That's why it's called the good news. That's why his yoke is, is easy. His burden's light. Yeah, and then Paul even says the simple message of Christ, the yeah. gospel, is very simple. Yes, it's simple. Now, here, Jesus himself, now to, to, to drive this home, Jesus himself reveals this spiritual concept here in Matthew 15. 17 through 18 it says, do not ye understand yet understand that whatsoever enters in at the mouth goes into the belly and is cast off into the drought. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. Kind of like what Jeremiah was saying. Yeah, exactly. And also the proverb, mm -hmm. the saying. So, you know, in this context, Jesus is talking about, you know, the Pharisees and the religious leaders are jamming up his disciples for eating with unwashed hands, mm -hmm. you know, some ritual. He says, you don't understand. It's, it's not what, what comes into the mouth. Yeah. It's not what you eat because all that does is goes into your stomach. Your stomach churns that up, takes the nutrients and the whatever, or if it's poison, it distributes it in your bloodstream and then you poop it out. Mm -hmm. That's what he says. And then it's cast out into the draught. Right. It's pooped out. But then he says, but those things which proceed out of the mouth, the inner heart, mm -hmm. that's what defiles. Yeah. And see, the other thing that I'm seeing here, too, about um, what Jesus is saying, it's all the natural, you know, the food that goes into the mouth and the belly is cast out. Yeah. That's the natural. Yes. But what Christ is interested in is the spiritual, yeah. the soul, the man's inner being. Yes. The natural That's is the human wisdom. Changed. That's when we say human wisdom says, well, how do I, how do I solve this? I need to, 
Uh, clean my hands, make le- sure that I'm eating clean food. Yes. You know, blah, 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 blah. And then it'll get inside of me. Whereas the spiritual is the opposite. Mm-hmm. It's the guarding of the heart of speaking those things that defile you. It's you have to guard that. You have to keep that in. You have to not let it have dominion over you. It gives place to Satan. Mm-hmm. That's where the condemnation comes in. It's a spiritual principle. Uh, very simple once you get it. And this is only done because you're in Christ Jesus. Yes. With the help of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The changed man, that's what it is. Because you, you still have that struggle between the natural man and the, the new man. And there's always going to be that conflict. Yeah. And what this does, it gives more dilution to the, for the spiritual to delude the natural. Mm-hmm. So by guarding your heart and guarding your thoughts and the condemnation, you become more spiritually enhanced and less fleshly. By doing the opposite, you're more fleshly and more uh, prone to demonic lies. All right? Uh, so from now on, now on, everybody, everybody, I want you to confess Romans 8, 1 out loud whenever you even begin to feel any demonic enemy. So in this way, you take the medicine to reverse the poison. You need to confess it, rima it in the New Testament, or debar it as in the Old Testament. It's a prophetic word. Mm -hmm. I am in Christ. So when the devil comes and says, oh, you're just, oh, you're just, you ain't got it. You ain't got it, brother. Here you are in church, and you're like, you can't even raise your hands in church because you were, you ain't got it, man. You're just, you're just an angry old man. That's my lie. That's my condemnation. Look, at here you are in church. You're just an angry old dude. You ain't got it. You can't even, right? The way out of that is to say, I have been crucified in Christ, devil. 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 When you get spiritual, it's devil. Mm-hmm. If you're not spiritual, it's devil. Or Lucifer, but when you get spirit, when you get the Holy Ghost, the devil. Uh, so you reverse that poison. Now Hebrews four twelve says, "The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart." Hmm. Let's unpack this a little bit, Miss Capel. Hebrews four twelve. The word of God. Now, what's the word of God? The logos of God, the rhema of God. You know what? I was just going to look that up. Yeah. The, uh, of course, this is New Testament, so it's not the debar, but it could be rhema. It could be logos. For the word. It's the logos of God. The logos of God, which is his, his intelligence. intelligence. Jesus Christ was the logos, was the word. In the beginning was the word. You know, it wasn't in the beginning was meditation of the heart. And the meditation of the heart was with God. And the meditation of the heart was God. It's not that. It was the word. It's always the word, the The logos. For the word of God, the logos of God is quick and powerful. It's not just the Bible, not just the scripture, but the actual words of God. The concept, the intelligence behind those words. When you say, I am not condemned because I'm in Christ Jesus. It's not just words and positive thinking. They're alive. It's quick. It means it's living. It's it's powerful. In other words, it has authority. Yep. And that's why when Peter is saying in his epistle, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. That's a great scripture. I think so. Because you you become incorruptible by what? The word. The word of God. Not the meditation that lives of your and heart. abides forever. No, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a spiritual principle. The the powerful word of God has a life. It's sharper than any surgeon's knife, okay? And it will cut between it'll cut out that poison from the soul and the spirit. It'll cut it out and then remove it. You dilute it and you remove it. You you poop it out. You get rid of it. 
And then on the on the physical side, the joints and the marrow. There's a spiritual side, soul and spirit, on the physical joints and marrow. See, it's a discerner of the what? The thoughts, thoughts. and intents of the heart. Yes. The motive. It's a discerner because your hearts are deceitful. So guard the heart because every issue of life is in there. Jesus says what comes out of the heart is what defiles a man. Exactly. And that's why it's also important um, what you get yourself involved in. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because all your experiences and everything become a part of you. Yeah. And that can come out later on too. Yeah. That's why it's harder for some people have had really, really dark, dark lives yeah. to get more freedom because because of the condemnation and things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, 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 the spiritual surgery we're talking about, spiritual surgery is the word. In the word. Mm-hmm. That's what you need. It starts in the heart and it is made active with the mouth. Mm-hmm. It starts in the heart and then it's made active with the mouth. Okay. Get that down. Everybody read Everybody touch yourself and say it starts in the heart and is made active with the mouth. It starts, it starts in, the in the heart and is made, made active, active with, with the, the mouth. mouth. Okay? That's the spiritual surgery we all need. So our battle cry has to be, there is no condemnation because I'm in Christ Jesus. Period. Period. End the story. Close it up. Bam. Bam. Now, I want to be real sure here that you understand this. When I say it starts in the heart, that's when I said, how do you hear the gospel? How do you hear the good news? You hear it mm-hmm. or you read it, right? Someone preaches it to you. So it's you. it starts in the heart, but you activate it by confessing it. That's why Paul says, confess the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart. Then you'll be saved. But they had to believe in the heart. They had to hear it first. They don't hear through the mouth. They hear through the ears. They don't read through the mouth. They read through the eyes. That's how that's how it gets inside of them. But to activate it, to sink it in, to turn it on, the word is activate. You have to debar it. In other words, you speak it into existence. Mm-hmm. As a man thinketh, So So is he. So if he thinks he's all that in a bag of chips, (laughs) you know, and he's a narcissist, as he speaks that, and then everybody goes, this guy's just an egotist narcissist, right? Or the opposite. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Starts in the heart, you activate it with the word. That's the spiritual principle. It's, it's, the word is what activates it. And even though sometimes yeah. your heart might be not quite believing. Yes. You can still, you know that the word of God is true. Yes. Like there is no condemnation, right? Yes. But you feel condemnation. Yes. But you have to keep speaking it because that's the truth. And that dilutes the untruth. Yes. Yeah, so you don't have to, and that's a real good point. Because if you're already feeling condemnation, yes. you're going to speak that condemnation. Yes. So you find a scripture in the word that um, that speaks truth about that lie. Yes. And you confess that truth to the point where it dilutes the lie that's in your heart. Yes, absolutely. If you got what Ms. Kapow just said, that's the key. That's the key. So you don't have to... Uh, blab it and grab it, claim it and name it. But this ain't that. This mm-hmm. isn't positive thinking. Inside, you're still thinking like you're a self-condemned sinner mm-hmm. and you did something wrong and God hates you. Inside, you're still thinking that. Mm-hmm. But that's not true. You're justified and have the righteousness of Christ and you've been acquitted. That's what you speak, whether you feel it or not. Yeah. It's like when, you know, sometimes we get wrong thoughts. Yeah. You think, oh, I'm a Christian. Why would I think that? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So instead of confessing that to where, you you know, I, I'm, I'm not a Christian anymore. How can I be a Christian when I have those kind of thoughts? And yeah. then you just keep 
meditating on that. Well, you find the scripture that says, I have the mind of Christ. Yes. And then that truth. Perfect would, example. Um, nullify the lie that's yes. in your head. And it's not just because you're going inside. I feel, um, you know, whatever that, you know, I, I have these, these ugly thoughts. And, and so I'm just going to speak happy. I'm just going to speak happy words, happy words, happy words, happy thoughts, peas and carrots, peas and carrots. This ain't that. No. This is a spiritual principle. Yeah. It's not positive thinking not at positive. all. It's... So when, when you, when you say I have the mind of Christ, you're speaking it into existence. Mm -hmm. The mouth is speaking that into existence. And then it goes down in and dilutes the poison or drives it out. Right. The truth then is what sets you free from that. Mm -hmm. And whom the sun sets free is, is free, free indeed. 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 Okay. So it's, it's, it's a simple, if you can get the spiritual principle, it's simple. So here's a little more, just a little, little additional stuff. Um, little additional concepts. Um, as Elohim rested on the seventh day after six days of speaking things into existence. And that's the Debar. Yes. Okay. So he creates, or God creates the world in six days and he says, let there be this, let there be that. Let, and he speaks things into existence. He doesn't, what? Think them into existence. He doesn't meditate in his heart into existence. He creates the existence through the mouth, through the speech, mm -hmm. through the debar. It's a prophetic word. You create your reality. Our reality is based on the truth of God, right? Mm -hmm. So we can rest assured in our salvation as free grace after we have confessed, here's a good word, professed. Same word. What does it, it mean when it says profess? That means to declare, to confess. You're professing your profession. I'm professing this or spoke into existence within our hearts, believing it so, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So God rested after six days of speaking things in existence so we too can enter into rest when in our hearts believe and we spoke that into existence where we confess Jesus Christ in our, with our mouth. That's right. We enter into his rest. He wants us to be in his rest. That's what Hebrews is talking about. Enter into the rest. Doesn't want us in the six days. We should be in the Sabbath spiritually. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 4.4. 4. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. He rested from all his works after speaking everything in existence. Hebrews 4.14 says... Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession or confession or what we professed as true. With our mouth, we create truth existence in our parts. We profess what we believe. We see it when we believe it. So Hebrews 4.14 says that we see Jesus Christ as a high priest. He's already passed into the heavens, right? Yeah, that's when he ascended. Yeah, and it says, the writer of Hebrews says, let us hold fast, don't let go, our profession. profession. What's a profession? It means a confession. You professed Jesus Christ as being risen from the dead. You professed mm -hmm. Jesus Christ as your Savior. Yeah, it's an acknowledgement, confession. So you hold fast your acknowledgement. You hold fast your confession. That's why it's important to speak it. it Paul, the writer of Hebrews doesn't say, we have a great high priest, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast that in our hearts. He doesn't say that. Hold it fast in your hearts. Believe it inside. Don't let it go. He says, hold fast your confession, words, your mouth. You spoke it into existence. Hold that truth. Keep speaking truth. And it gets inside of you, okay? So, like you said, we will see it when we believe it. 
the human wisdom always says, I'll believe it when I, I see, see it. it. Yeah. Give me the evidence first. Yeah. I'll believe it when I see it, Ms. Kapow. But God says, you'll see it when you believe it. Mm -hmm. See, you got to start believing it and then you'll see. You want healing? You better believe it. And that's what Jesus always says. If you believe, all things are possible, possible. if you believe. Yeah. Because faith is a substance of things not seen. But hoped what hope for so if we put all our stuff on what we can see uh we're in big trouble so if you're waiting to be healed if you're waiting to be delivered if you're waiting for whatever and you're waiting to see it before you believe the word of god you're just spinning around you have to believe the word of god you confess it get in your heart then you'll see it it's the dilution of the pollution spiritual surgery Right? Uh, let's do one more. Um, Hebrews 4, oh, two more. Uh, Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. It is imperative that we profess and confess with the mouth, speaking into existence the truth in our hearts for salvation. And in this way, we can boldly, with confidence, go to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and grace in time of need. You know what I think is interesting, or it's really special about the throne of grace? In the in the Old Testament, the throne of grace was only entered once a year by the high priest. Mm -hmm. And uh, they put bells on him. Yeah. So that, you know, just in case he keeled over. But... With Jesus, he is our high priest, and he boldly went into the throne of grace. And we, as sons of God, now, because of the blood of Jesus, we now can go into that throne of grace mm. because of what Jesus did for us. And, That's the beauty. And obtain mercy. Mercy and, and grace. grace. In time of need. Amen. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's good news, but you can't get better news than that. And that's why the devil wants to remove that from you. That's why the devil don't want you to do this. That's why the devil wants you to self-condemn yourself. That's why the devil wants to keep you in a prison of self-condemnation. When the truth is, there is no condemnation. To those who are in Christ Jesus. There's none, period. Period. The rest of it's all a big, fat, demonic lie from a big, fat serpent who created the lie. Mm -hmm. Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Notice... It departs not from the mouth, not the heart. Why? He says, heaven and earth shall pass, but my words are eternal. Right on. Look at that. Way back then. The book of the law shall not depart out of the mouth. If I was going to write that, and I'm talking about the Torah, would I not write, Ms. Kapow, the book of the law shall not depart from your heart. Okay? Mm -hmm. You shall meditate on it day and night. Observe it. Right? Then you're going to be successful and prosperous. But it, you, the yeah, book of the law is in your heart. Because you're always thinking about it. Yes, it's in your heart. But he meditating. doesn't say that. He mm -hmm. says, the book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. mouth. Yes. It's, it's, you constantly are speaking the Torah or the word of God. Thou shall not have any other gods before me. Then when you confess with your mouth, guess what happens in Joshua 1, 8, 8, 1, 8. Then you meditate there in day and night because you're confessing it. You're speaking it in existence and you're meditating on it. Then when you observe everything according, and then you start observing it because now it becomes part of you. Mm -hmm. And then when you do that, now you're successful. Now you're prosperous. That's how you walk in the spirit. Boom. Boom. Booyah. Booyah. Now, at the end, you're right. Jesus says heaven and earth will pass away, 
but my words shall never pass away. They're eternal. So he didn't say heaven and earth pass away, but what I put in your heart, Miss Kapow, will never pass away. Heaven and earth pass away, but your your thoughts of your heart will never pass away. But your no, it's his word. Yeah, and the his word eternal. Word. Just think of it, eternal. It has no beginning and it has no end. It's timeless. Yeah, there's no kernel and eternal. So that's that is that is the spiritual teaching of spiritual surgery. Um, if we can get this down. For me, I understand it, but if I can remember it at all times, it's another thing. I understand it now, but I got to keep it in my remembrance that this is the way it's got to go. It, this is an exercise. It's not something that you go, oh, I heard the Kapals talk about that was interesting. And then you go on mm -hmm. and start studying ancient aliens again. This is something you have to exercise. So every time something comes up, you have to profess and confess the truth. The truth is what set you free. That'll dilute the poison in you, the evil heart, the, the fallen nature, the flesh, and the devil, the whole bit, and the world, everything, the lies of the world, everything. This is it. You have to remember to do it, though. And and you have to exercise it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just happen. Uh, you don't speak words just because. You speak words on purpose. You purposely choose the words you speak. All right? All righty. And I think that's it. This is probably the best show we've ever done. It's, it's true. It's the key. It's a good word. It's a good word. I like the way you ended it with word. Mm -hmm. um, or like my uh, my homies say, word. Mm -hmm. Well, Happy New Year, everybody. And uh, the Kapals hope to see you in the new year. We uh, pray God's uh, blessings upon you, his health, his health, yes, his health, his yes. prosperity, um, his blessings, his favor, and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. ciao babies. Ciao. Try your